Yes, yes, y'all. Welcome. Welcome to today's call. Woo! I'm excited for this one. We've got Sean Clark, high level CEO, coming on to join us. We're going to pick his giant brain and see if we can learn some stuff. <laughs> What's up, Charles and Linda? Good to see you here. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Studcast. That's awesome. Welcome, Teresa Robinson. Welcome. Santiago, welcome. John, welcome. Good to see everybody here. Looks like we got a good group coming on. Awesome. Let's go, says Ahmed. Absolutely. Emil, hello, hello, hello. Welcome, Paul. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. Hello from Danette. Hello, Danette. Hello, Jennifer. Santiago. Donna, good morning, Donna. Teresa, great to have you met you in person in Dallas. Yes, absolutely. So much fun. Thank you very much. Yes, loving the shirt. I figure, come on, we got the we got the guy on the call. I gotta rep the gear, right? Gotta rep the gear and look what, what oh special appearance from the high level hat during the call, too. I'm not messing around. Come on. <laughs> What's up, Jeff? Good to see you, Carlos. Welcome, Tim. Welcome. Yes, awesome. I'm excited too. Uh, man, I had such a great time at the Level Up Summit. You guys know because I've been telling everybody um, about how much is steady. Yeah. <laughs> Drink that Kool Aid. Absolutely. Over under how fast is Sean going to talk? That's a, that's a good question. Hello from Austria. Look at that. I love it. I love all these. I love the international. It makes me so stinking happy about this uh, technology stuff. When I get to connect with people all over the world, I love it. Welcome everybody. Thank you for being here no matter what time it is for you and uh, what you got going on with your day. I know everybody's busy. We got a lot of stuff going on. So thank you for being here. Um, as I was saying, just uh, recently returned from the Level Up Summit in Dallas, which was just absolutely fantastic. Um, Really, I cannot say enough good things about what they did with that event. Um, and I know you've heard it from everybody because everybody's ranting and raving about it. Um, they, you know, have some events you go to and they under invest in all of the things that are like the little touches that make an event. You know, you spent your money, you came there, you traveled, you did all that thing, you know. So you go to those events where there's no food or the food sucks or there's no drinks or you have to pay for all your drinks and there's no real entertainment. These guys like invested in all of that stuff to make sure that all the little touches were there, that, you know, you had a good time. But most importantly, I cannot stress enough. And this is why I'm adamant that everybody in this industry get to this event next year is that the community of people that were there that you got to hang out with, interact with, um, learn from, get encouragement from see the role models of people who are, you know, are several steps ahead of you. You know, it was, it, it's so important to surround yourself with that. And we're in an industry that thanks to high level is going through massive, massive changes that are creating huge new opportunities that you've got to, you got to jump in there and be a part of it. You got to jump in there and get in the mix and surround yourself with those people and yeah, you can see here, right here, Angie, Angie says, hey, it was the best event. Um, what's up, Angie? Good to see you. Local Domination so says they went all out. So much fun. So many connections. Absolutely. Charles and Linda says, plus a killer rooftop bar. You know what's crazy? Charles and Linda, I didn't even make it up to that bar. I never even made it up to the rooftop. I was spent so much time in the speakeasy. <laughs> Teresa says, best event ever. Um yeah, David says, did I miss anything? No, you're you're good. I'm still just yakking and warming up here. We've got Sean waiting patiently in the background. Uh, clients over customers, says Angie. All right. <laughs> All right, cool. Awesome. Um, uh, enough, uh, enough ranting and raving and warming up, everybody. Um, thank you so much for being here. I know we've got Sean waiting patiently back here. So, Sean, I'm going to go ahead and bring you into the stream and join us here. Welcome, sir. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Where are you today? You're in a different spot than normal. I just moved my desk. I don't know. I, I you know, you just play with your space all the time. 
I, uh, so this is my latest <laughs> version of this. I just, I just t turned everything. Oh, gotcha. Good, good, good. Well, it's good <laughs> to see you, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. You know, what's funny. I didn't make it up to that rooftop bar either. And we didn't actually even rent that space. We just took it over. Just took so it over? It worked out, yeah, it worked out perfectly. They just, uh, you well, know, I think we rented every other space, but that one we just took over. So it was it was kind of nice. <laughs> but I hear it was awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think you guys pretty much took over the hotel. I mean, it wasn't 100%, but it had to be really close. So Real close, real close. In fact, yeah. um, I'm pushing to do that at the same place next year. Uh, and we'll just we'll just take over the extra spaces next year that we didn't take this year. Yeah. Um, just because I thought it was perfect. It was a great size yeah. for the event. You know, I couldn't I couldn't think of doing it too much bigger just because I feel like it was so intimate. I don't want to lose that intimacy. Yeah, I do. I do think that that's really important. And that and that is one of the things I got to say again to encourage people to get to these events early, because I've been a part of industries where the high level of the industry, you know, got established in these first years. It is, it's intimate. It's a smaller crowd. Um, and that's awesome that you plan on keeping it that way, Sean, but you know, over, over time, I mean, high level is an absolute rocket ship. The community is growing like crazy. So inevitably some of that, you know, it's, it's really hard to maintain. And yeah, so it's true. The, yeah, the earlier you're in on all this stuff and the, and the, the earlier you can get some of those connections made and stuff like that the better. I mean, at this event this year, we had essentially unlimited access to Sean and his team, you know, walking around there, shaking hands. I mean, as you would expect with how approachable these guys always are throughout the year. Um, but, you know, they were there just hanging out and, and everybody's getting to have good conversations and stuff like that. Inevitably, that stuff just gets harder. It has to. So yeah. get there yeah, early, absolutely. take advantage of, of these early days. It's so stinking important. So we're, pl we're uh, planning now for next year already um you know we uh, we're you know we're going to try to change as little as possible <laughs> um and just kind of round out the edges because there was a lot of great stuff like we had the, the you know some things will make bigger like the support room was a huge hit or you could sit down and actually you know meet with somebody from support and have them help you set up your account things like that we're going to double oh, that size cool. i think that was our one of our most popular features yeah. so um i like the robots myself um, so if we can't one up that idea, we're definitely going to bring those guys back. Uh, so, you know, there was a lot of fun stuff like that, that I think. That was, really that was cool. awesome. I mean, who knows next year you'll be, you'll be giving people rides on uh, Elon Musk rocket to the moon or something like that. Oh, like the yeah, technology, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, the technology you guys had there this year was over the top. So <laughs> that's cool. I enjoyed the Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. See, we, we sort of just, you know, we're a bunch of nerds over here. So we were like, let's just throw the party. We'd want to have, like, we, we wish we that's always awesome. had in high school. So that's, yeah. that's what we did. <laughs> I'm all in. I love it. I love it. I'm, I'm nerding out right with you. Um, cool. Well, look, um, let's see here. Uh, Sean, I know we spent uh, hours preparing the agenda for this and uh, the bullet <laughs> by bullet, second by second. Point, we, so, <laughs> uh, we can just go through and knock those off. I'm kidding, everybody. We have absolutely... Uh, zero uh, pre-planned agenda, which is which is perfect. I want to just leave it conversational, <laughs> and I want to hear um, from you guys any questions that you have for Sean. We're going to do our best to get to as many of those. But Sean, I'd like to kick it off, uh, if you don't mind, with what were I, I mean? It's, it's, I know for you, first big event for the company, the way it turned out, what a success it was. The uh, the vibe of the community that was there, all that type of stuff. It's got to feel really, really good. I imagine that with all of the data that you get to see over the course of the year with all the agencies that are in there and stuff like that, and then combined with this event, I, I imagine you had to leave there with some, some takeaways as to what are like, I don't know, what, what, are, what are some, some major takeaways that you can share with the group in terms of, Hey, here's, here's kind of where the industry is at, where it's going, you know, like who, who and why are certain people having like real success and stuff like that? Like you, you have, a, you have a, a lens into this industry now that nobody else yeah, has. We do, we, do, we do have quite a bit of data. So, yeah. um, you know, I would say, so the, the cool part about this is the opportunity that is there is is bigger than it's ever been before. So the, the, the fun part about this, I suppose, is if you're in this industry, there's not really a threat to you as a business. So there's still a ton of business. Now, as always, and this is what makes it fun and, and also makes it worth doing, is things are always changing, right? So there's always a new, you know, like we heard a lot about TikTok, I think it's about the event. 
Um, there's always a new tactic or strategy or ad network or whatever that you need to pursue and master, right? But ultimately it still fundamentally comes down to models. So the business model matters more than anything else because it's, it's, not, it's not that you aren't gonna attack the new thing, it's just how you attack it really will determine how well you do when it comes to making money at the end of the day, right? And I think everybody has always attacked things generally from this sort of custom bespoke, you know, one-off uh, sort, of, sort of kind of angle and it's incredibly expensive to do it. <laughs> so the people who do it that way, unless they're serving the absolute one percent of any market, they're they're not doing well. They're they're not lasting long. They're they're seen as too expensive. They don't scale. They have very high churn rates. That kind of thing. Um, and this is where I mean, this is, I've always loved your services that scale concept. Um, you know, we we have something I think is basically a ripoff of that called Saspreneur. <laughs> um, and ultimately, at the end of the day, it, it's about you know exactly how you think about it, right? So it's it's sort of saying, listen, we're trying to accomplish this goal, and we've got to do it by using tools and using services and kind of putting them in the middle and charging an amount that is, is sustainable and repetitious and scalable and still ROI positive for our clients and you know keeping away from the edges where we're not selling um, a, a software tool because that's stupid. There's lots of tools. Now it's like my, my screwdriver versus you, your screwdriver, like, uh-oh, now we're in trouble. Or the other way, which is I'm you know this bespoke custom services person and now um, I'm super expensive, right? It's, that, it's hitting that middle ground. Um, and it's yeah. funny, I've always known this to be true. You've always known this to be true. But I remember at the event, there was, did you meet the, uh, there were, they had a booth, white label, something or other, I'm trying to remember what they were called, but I should go look at my own vendor list. But yeah, they I, had I probably did. Booth. I think I met all of them at some point or another, but I'm not. I'm going to look, I'm going to look, I'm going to look these guys up. Uh, the white label suite. Um, they were only nine weeks old at that event and here, and their story is amazing because it, 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 it's literally that they said, we try to be SaaS printers for a year in our agency by selling high level against other CRM systems. And we got obliterated after a hard year of work, we had 12 customers and it was just such a slog. And then what we realized is instead of selling the darn, uh, you know, drill, sell the hole. So we just started saying, listen, you know, would you like a thousand in their, their pitch was a thousand leads or something in your right. account every month for 150 bucks or something like that. And right. what they, what they said is, oh, and by the way, we're going to give you this pre qualify they call the pre-qualification CRM as just part of it. And then when you get a good lead, we can always move it over to whatever it is you're using, right? And they found that just by changing that one thing, people are throwing money at them like crazy. And then to, what they would find is then that CRM that they were using when it came up for renewal or whatever it was, people said, hey, wait a second, this uh, pre-qualification CRM is sure fancy. Can we just use that instead? And bingo, they were able to move a bunch of people over. So again, finding these really interesting ways to, to, to pitch people that aren't yeah. selling, you know, like software. Yeah, no, that, that's awesome. And I, I think, I think the, the most important thing out of that that I want to stress to everybody is what you said, that models matter more than anything. Business models more, matter more than anything. This is something that um, Warren Buffett has stressed forever. And it was one of the most important, one of the most important things that I learned from him and reading and, and listening to him is that, you know, the best model will make even kind of a dummy look like a success and the absolutely. worst model will make a genius look like a dummy. And it's totally. absolutely true. And, and the, the biggest example in the world of this is look at all the incredibly wealthy people that came from Wall Street, particularly during certain decades, where there's a lot of just dudes who grew up on Long Island or whatever who, you know, got put into Wall Street and just cold called and became millionaires. And it's not because they were geniuses, you know, they, they were cold callers. They were cold callers who had literally what up until, you know, up in, up until now is probably the best model that was ever created, which is money management at the scale of trillions of dollars, right? So, so totally, everybody... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody was a genius because they were millionaires. And we yeah. all thought, wow, they're these you know, smart Wall Street guys. Really smart it's a very people. small percentage yeah. of the Wall Street guys that are actually doing anything in terms of managing the money. And an even smaller percentage of them who are actually doing it successfully when you look at all the stats. So yep. it's just an amazing model. Software is an amazing model. SaaS is an amazing model. Services that are wrapped around those tools to get you the automation, to get you the recurring revenue at the right price and at the right margins is an amazing model. So 
just get it, please. I, I know everybody in my audience, I, I mean, I've already drilled this into your head a thousand times. And hopefully um, if there's anybody here that still has not just like completely drank that Kool-Aid, listen to what Sean's saying. He can see the industry better than anybody can see the industry. And he's telling you right now that the people who are out there trying to do custom or anything like that are losing. And the people who are out there and going and finding a way to sell the recurring revenue using automation, using assets at the right price point so that people stick, so that you build up that annuity over time. Those are the people that are winning. Okay. So we, we've got to, you can't fight the model. If you fight the model, you lose. It's just, it, don't listen to me. Listen to Sean, listen to Warren Buffett, right? It, it's just proven. So yeah, you, 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 I think that this, it, what's fun about, and this is, we've built a ton of this. A lot of what we talked about on Level Update was about this is helping to continue to create more scalable systems. So if you look at like the, the template library rolled out, you know, the whole goal of the template Love library it. is to make it easier for you to do social media posting at scale or to do websites at scale or whatever. And here's the fun part about, here's what I like about it anyways. And the way you pitch it is there's this whole menu of things and you can choose any of the ones that you feel confident, confident in or like, or feel like is, you know, something that you understand or whatever it is, but then it's the, it's the model that you then use to actually deliver it. And then the pitch is so easy because now you're not saying like, feature 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 you're saying like hey do you post on social media you know three times a week um oh no i don't oh well do you know that that's really good for businesses and businesses that do get 90 percent more sales than businesses that don't oh yeah i do but it's so hard and and then i've tried to get somebody to help me and it's so expensive and then you like and then you get to drop the line like well what if that could be you know done for 300 a month oh wow 300 a month that's amazing right and it's funny because i can point to business after business after business that does this like Patient Pop is a wonderful example I love to use. They sell websites <laughs> and, and, and they just got bought out by Correo. They actually walked around their local community, got to a million dollars in revenue selling websites. How the heck do they sell websites? They would walk to the doctor's office and then say, listen, how about for 600 bucks a month, we'll do your website. And they're like, 600 bucks? No one's ever gave us that deal before. Forget the fact that it's a templated website based on WordPress and it's, it, it, it's very little customization. It's only sell, sold as a yearly plan. So really they're pocketing you know, 600 times 12, right? So what is that? $7,200 mm -hmm. on and on and on. But, and then they'll upsell you later into bigger plans, all that stuff. But the reality was in the moment when the doctor's making that purchase decision, 600 for a website is different than 20,000 that they're getting quoted from everybody yeah. else that they talk to. And that simple model, rinse and repeat, they, they, they got over, they got to like a hundred million in revenue before they were bought by Correo last year. So that's, that's it. That unbelievable. Was just it is yeah, unbelievable. But it's yeah, terrible. it's unbelievable. It's yeah. Yeah. And it's and it is so so doable. I mean, honestly, it was doable a year ago with high level, but it is so doable now because of the templates that you guys rolled out. The template template library is amazing because anybody on this call right now can sign up for a high level, be inside of their account, be talking to a prospect, and the prospect goes. Well, can you give me an example of what, you know, this might look like? And within minutes, you can be like, yeah, hey, you know what? Let me go ahead and let's just put up a, a rough something for you just to give you some idea and, and have something up that is like a great starting point that, and, and, and I love that you guys are doing this, not just with websites, you're doing it with funnels, landing pages, email campaigns, everything. Um, the starting point that you're giving and the uh, removal, and this is so critical because you mentioned earlier, you mentioned, you know, TikTok or the latest thing that you have to master. And one of my most important points to everybody out there is you don't actually have to master any of that stuff. Um, <laughs> and, and, and here's why. One, creativity is ridiculously expensive, right? Creativity is expensive when you're trying to produce new creativity for new customers every single time, right? It's expensive. And two, the software and the templates and stuff are now reducing the need for creativity a dramatic amount. So now you've got, now you've got the 80% starting point and then apply the last 20% of creativity or you apply 10% and let your customer do another 10% if you want to give them some access to do some stuff, if they're the right kind of customer for that. And then three, here is the reality. I learned this at my IT services business and it, and it took a while to get through my head. And when it, when it did, it changed everything. None of your small business customers need to be bleeding edge at anything, right? I mean, none of them. 
And, and in fact, what they need to be, uh, this is what I, my approach has, has always been now, ever since I learned this lesson was, you know what, we'll be 20% behind bleeding edge and then we'll figure it out. And then like 20% after that, then we'll give it to our, our customers because right. they don't need to be bloody. They don't need the expense of being ble bleeding edge. They don't need the trial and error of bleeding edge. The restaurant that's not doing any social media right now or barely doesn't need to be you know, I need to know the seven most advanced things to do on TikTok. And so yeah, if, no, you, if don't. you chase all of that stuff too aggressively, you're just wasting time. You're spinning wheels. Let, let some of that stuff get percolated down to where it's, it's mass market. It's proven. Sean and his team can build a system around it to help you to get you the 80% of value out of it. You don't need to be bleeding edge at this stuff. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't disagree. I think. I think it, it's really exciting to think you need to. You need to always have the new stuff. But the reality is, you know, the basketball games are won with the two pointers, not the slam dunks, right? It's just yeah. the slam dunks make the highlight reels. They make the, you know, they make the front page. But that's not really what wins the game. You take the two pointers away, and all the slam dunks are, are you know, you have a losing team that did some slam dunks. That's what you have, right? It's just yeah. not how it how it works. And you know, and you know, you can be fancy it, on the side, you can be fancy in your free time, but like, if you want to run a business, you want to make money, the goal is about consistency, scalability. You want things to, people really value that just repetitious consistency way more than they do the innovative thing that they've never, ever seen before. I mean, I think in, in general, while it's, it sounds cool and it's fascinating and it can be in the right circumstances, if you're going to rely on it and particularly yeah. if you're going to buy it, you're just going to want it to perform the, the job you want it to perform. And I think that's what we all want when we really think about how we purchase things in life. That's what your job is to deliver to your customers is that sort of routine consistency at a price that they can afford and is very scalable and quite frankly is boring. It's like you want to be as close to the power company as possible. Like you just, the power comes on when you flip the light switch and it doesn't do any more than that. It's never exciting power. The power is never like, you know, they don't have wireless power yet that, you can shoot across the room. I've seen that it happens. It's a thing. And maybe it happens someday, but, but even when it happens, it better be consistent. Otherwise people aren't buying it. So that's what you need yeah. to be um, for your customers. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. I, and um, I, I can't remember. I, I, I said this a long time ago and I stole it from somebody, but I can't remember who I stole it from. So somebody, you know, please find the, the proper credit and don't sue me or anything like that. But technology is eating local right? Technology is eating local and, it, and it's high level. High level is eating local. It's eating all of these services that used to be customized and creative and expensive and stuff like that. And that's why it is creating the much bigger opportunity for all of us, because what it's doing is it's, it's allowing us to actually get the potential of the market and, and turn it into revenue. There's been all kinds of potential in the market. Everybody in the world points to the small business universe and goes, oh, look, there's 32 million businesses just in the United States alone, and they have to spend a trillion dollars on all these things. But the reality is, is that they can't afford, most of them can't afford to spend the money on the things that they need. Yeah. And so they're all holding back. They know they should be doing X, Y, and Z. But when you give them a $35,000 price tag for a new website, they go, eh, I'm, I'm going to have to live without that, right? And so sure. it's yeah. untapped potential. The software allows us to tap into that potential by lowering the cost, which creates a huge opportunity. I love what you said. It should just be like a utility. Our goal should be, how do we get the monthly recurring? Here's access to your stuff that, uh, you know, does what you need it to do. Totally. Right. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to, you don't want to be a highlight on the income statement. You don't want to be the thing that they're really scrutinizing. It's just not, yeah. not who you want to be. Exactly. That's the likelihood that that just means you're going to get cut. That means you're too expensive. Or, or you're you're an unknown, you're radical. You want to be the boring thing they gloss over. Like you want to be there, yeah. like right after the lunch budget or something, right? You just want to be boring yeah. um, and forgettable because you're just uh, you're an of course, right? No one says, hmm, I don't know that. that power bill. We might be able to do without that. No one says that, right? They're like, oh, of course we're going to pay the power bill. Moving on, right? You want to be that. And it's not because you don't want to do a great job. It's not because you don't want to create amazing ROI and impact. It's because that's what you need to be in order to do a great job and create a lot of amazing impact in ROI because most, like uh, uh, like Mike just said, most businesses will hold back because they'll say, gosh, I know, I know that I'm supposed to do this, but it feels, and feels is the right word here. It's a feeling, It's but it's still very, very palpable. It feels too expensive. It feels too hard. It feels yeah. too risky. 
And so when you lower that price tag down, you, you, you lower that feeling of, oh my God, I'm taking a massive risk. You're, you're packaging in a way where they said, well, you know, it's about what I'm paying for my, my internet bill. Uh, I can take a risk on that, right? I'll yeah. try that. Um, I can yep. consistent because they know if it works, they can consistently pay for it forever. I, I love, I'm going to quote you on this, Sean. You're going to see, there's going to be a quote up on my Instagram and Facebook all uh, really soon. It says that our goal is to be boring and forgettable. I love it. <laughs> in your, in your marketing, be remarkable in your, in your cost and in your, uh, and the, the amount of thought time that any of your customers have to put in, like evaluating you, should we be doing this? Should we not be doing this? Boring and forgettable, right? Yeah. Right. Every product, every product that stays on your list every month is just that. It's, it's, yeah. it's simple. It's easy. It, there's just no friction there. It doesn't get in your face. And the more people do, the, the worse it's going to get. Yeah. What's up, Tim? Good to see you, my man. I there hope everything will go well for you on your travels. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, great high level partner there doing really cool stuff. Um, so, um, yeah, Gareth actually very, I like, I like this. Absolutely. Gareth was at your event. Sean, I don't know if you recall me and him really good guy. High level is the first small business has built for Jeff Lynn Moore's early majority and it's crossing the cows model. Absolutely. Yeah. And I love Gareth finding people in my community that can geek out on, on academic books and stuff like that. Cause that's, that's my favorite thing to do. Um, <laughs> Sean, um, can you tell us then, okay, you, you, you know, you mentioned it's creating bigger opportunities for all of us. Where do you see, um, let, let's start it. Let's start at kind of bigger picture stuff because there's a, yeah, there's right. a ton of detailed questions in, in the group here, sure. but bigger picture, where do yeah. you see, let's say the next 12 to 18 months going in the industry and high levels role in that? Sure. I mean, Gosh, this is where I like to be boring and forgettable. So um, at the end of the day, you know, I, I actually think it's about us sticking to what we're doing. So the model is correct. And it's really about getting everybody to adopt the model the way they should. And mm -hmm. all of us are in different places in that journey, right? And so it's about, some of us, it's about starting. Some of it's about scaling. Some of it's about, it's just continuing to transition. But this idea that this model, this idea of selling a recurring service that scales to every single person in either our local community or our, you know, our national community or in our Facebook group or however we're reaching our people, that's the right model. That is the model that will make you the most money, that will scale the best, that will have the most profitability. They'll have the highest exit valuations if you ever want to sell, like on and on, or, or you want to raise money, you'll have, the, you'll have the highest valuations for your raise. All of those things are baked into this model. So this is the right model. So now it's about how do we get everybody to that model and then on the high level side specifically, it's how do we create all the features that we still need to create in order to continue to enable that model? Because what I've learned from this experience, unfortunately, is if you say, if someone says, do you have this? And you can't say yes, then it doesn't matter because they just sort of stop right there. Their brain shuts off and you could say, you know, I, 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 we hand out free money every month. If you just sign up, we actually pay you more than you pay us in a check. <laughs> they wouldn't hear you. They would just sort of, yeah. they, they're already gone. So what we'll do though, is we'll continue to pound out the features that we know um, not only will help new customers coming in, but also for those of you who are farther down the SaaSpreneur journey, what, there's also, it's not a one-time charge. You know, there's the $200 plan, but there's the 300 and the 400 and the, you know, there are ways to get higher. And we want, we know we want to layer in some of those features. There's also incremental costs. So, you know, I don't know, things like WordPress hosting or Yext or um, SMS markup and phone call markup, that kind of thing is huge. And so like, if we come out with a phone system, that's going to get you, some people will be able to get that in, in house. That'll create more revenue opportunity on the phone side. So all of that sort of thing is kind of where we'll proceed in the next 12 months. That's awesome. I, I, to me, that is the best answer that you could give because the, the, you know, the answer is essentially we're just going to keep grinding away at what we're doing and just make it better and easier for everybody because yeah, it's two pointers for us all day long and it's, and yeah. it's boring and, it's, and, 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 you know, and it's fun at the end of the day. I mean, you know, it's yeah. sort of like every everything we've done to date, the reason why we've been so successful is because that's what we've been doing the whole time. And some some people noticed, that, you know, and it's a skateboard model, I guess, but some people noticed when it was a skateboard and some people are starting to take a little bit more notice as it starts to become a race car. But, you know, we'll just keep doing what we've been doing because we know we're touching people in the right ways. We're helping them create businesses they didn't have. I, I mean, I'll tell you the best part of the event by a long shot was how many people came up to me and said that, that's that they've been able to change their lives using high level as some part of that. I, I had somebody come up and say, you know, I have no idea who I am, but I have a $10 million a year business now because of you. 
It's, I it's, love that. That was amazing. It's it's unbelievable, and I I don't know how many people I told at your event, and how many people. I mean, I'm going to tell on this video right now too. When you go to this event three years from now, and, and particularly five years from now, there are going to be a whole bunch of new millionaires. They're going to be a, a whole bunch of new millionaires because they've either done exactly what Sean just said. They've been back there grinding. They found a way to sell customers. And now all of a sudden they have 300 grand a month in recurring revenue where they never had that in their business before. Or two, you're going to start seeing three years from now, five years from now, there's going to be a ton of activity of people who did that. And then we're able to sell their business for 8 million bucks, 9 million bucks and exit out. And now they're like, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I was, I, I, you know, I'm 57 and I sold her for 9 million bucks, Sean. And now I'm done. Like, yeah, I mean, you're going to see, you're going to see so much of that type of stuff because again, it's, it's not because all of a sudden we all became geniuses. It's because of the model. We went from a model that was billing time and talent that is unpredictable and not very profitable to a model where you're now stacking automated recurring revenue, which somebody with a bunch of cash can go, oh, I can buy that. I can buy yeah. that because I know that recurring cash is going to keep on coming in. And so it just changes the financial dynamics of the whole industry, which is just cool. Really? Yeah, cool. I, I totally agree. I mean, it, it's so, you know, if you ask yourself today, like, how does my business work? So if I go on vacation for a, a, a week, does my, does, you know, how much revenue will I lose? And if the answer is a lot, you're not, you're not in the right business. You, you have a bad model, right? Now, it does it mean you're going to go on vacation for a week and be un, unreachable? Well, some of us are, are, are gutsy enough to do that. Um, some of us aren't, but the fact of the matter is it's the, can you, and, 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 you know, you should go on vacation, right? And yeah, you should be in touch for emergencies and all that, whatever. That's all your style. But the reality is, can you, what does the model look like? You know, because, and then the biggest thing is on, and, and if you maybe don't want to take vacations, but you want to exit someday and, and I'll tell you how it works. I, I, I've met many a private equity and VC guy at, at this point and they, and they're not, they're not saying, can I buy something I can work in every day? They're not saying, you know, is this a job? They're saying, is this a business? That is, can I buy a cash flow stream that just comes to me whether or not I do anything right now? They're not idiots. They know that there needs to be a manager and blah, 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 but They'll, they'll factor all of that in. But what they're looking for is this routine, sort of predictable, every month kind of growing revenue stream. And if you can give that to them, man, that is where all the highest valuations in the world go. Um, you know, it's funny. I just recently talked to somebody who's rolling up roofing companies um, and they're really excited. They've raised a bunch of private equity money. They're going around the country buying roofing businesses. And I said, hey, what are you giving for valuations? He's like, oh, two, two to two and a half times. So like, oh my God, that sounds, and I said, is that revenue or EBITDA? Because, you know, revenue is up here, EBITDA is down here. So that's like net income, right? It's like, oh, that's EBITDA. So what does that mean? That means that profit on the books to the roofer, this could be a, I've been working as a roofer for 30 years. I built my roofing business. You give me two to two and a half times my profit for two years. That means all I have to do is work for two more years and I've gotten what you gave me. That sucks. <laughs> that's a really rough deal, right? I mean, that's not, yeah. a, that's not a big exit. That's almost and that's and that's normal. That's typical for most businesses. Very, and that's the problem. They're not. They're actually seen as being like an like they're killing it because all these roofers are saying yes because that's a great deal for them because there's not a lot of people who want to buy a roofing business. Why? It's because it's a job. It's how does this work? Well, you buy my business and people come in and you go out in the van and you put a roof on and they're like, yeah, what? you go you go that's swing a hammer and nails on somebody's roof. Yeah. Precisely, precisely. Yeah. And so versus this model is different. This model, first of all. If, if you're doing SaaS you, or, or in services that scale, you, you should expect to see eight to 10 times. And this is not EBITDA, it's revenue. And the reason why is because when you have a low enough churn rate, they shift they shift the, the valuation line up. Um, they don't shift it, it, shift it down because it truly is a super high margin profit business. Um, and you're going to get a significantly higher exit valuation purely on the numbers. Yeah, purely on the numbers. And, and it's, on, it's on the model. It's on the model. If I can buy a model yeah. where money comes in on autopilot versus I have to be creative enough to figure out how to design a website, then I can buy that business. That's absolutely the case. Timothy Miller, congratulations. That's awesome, man. And thank you so much for the kind words. That is exactly what we're talking about right there. He went from, you know, whatever he was at to 20K a month, monthly recurring and just getting started, I know, which is fantastic.
Um, all right, Sean, I'm going to go through some of these questions yeah, here. Awesome Maybe question before that. we do that, though, is there, I know there's, you know, there's, the, there's always the feature focus and you guys did some cool feature drop excitement at the event and it's been amazing yes. the stuff that you guys have been rolling out uh, and making live just since the event. It's, it's incredible. Yes. Is there any one juicy nugget, like, you know, major feature or direction or something like that, that you can drop and tell you're, people? You're, you're sort of asking me, you know, if, if I have a, 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 a child, I love more. Right. So <laughs> having, being a, being a father of, of uh, a couple of kids yourself, I think you might I understand you. that. So yeah, I yeah. think it'd be better to ask you. And also I think given that you're the professional here, I would ask, is there a feature you like better than any other feature that you saw? Me personally, you personally. Oh my gosh. I, so here, and this is, this is where boring and forgettable, I think is so damn important. So here's, here's the deal. You guys updated finally, because I've been pestering you. Sean, Sean has to, Sean, I, I am fortunate enough that I got to know Sean early enough in this thing that I can, I can actually reach him and pester him. And so I still do that regularly. Um, with the, with the things that I want fixed where I'm like, Sean, you're killing me. Just fix this dang thing. Um, that's so, the wrong word. I, I get great advice from Mike on a, on a regular basis and I feel lucky to get it. <laughs> Thank you. The, the conversations, the conversations. So I think that the conversations feature is so powerfully important in getting your foot in the door with these small businesses and being able to very quickly and easily demonstrate some incredible value at essentially no cost. So I have been trying to use the, the conversations feature as it's intended to be used for the last year or so. And I do, and I've been able to get a good amount of value out of it. But as an example, with my media site near San Diego, I get hundreds and hundreds of comments every single day on social media. And so I'm getting these floods of inbound comments and then for those of you who, who know, if you sent an email out from high level and then somebody had an autoresponder or anything like that, all those came in the conversation. So literally my um, conversations box for their San Diego, I think got backed up to the tune of like 12,000 unread things. And I was just <laughs> like, oh my God. And so they didn't have a way until recently where I could go in and just like mass select those and mark them as red or mark them as unread or say, Hey, these ones need to be followed up on. So you rolled out those features. It is, it is such a, I'm sure most people are like, well, Mike, that's not sexy new webinars or whatever. That's, you know, that's just this. but it makes all the difference in me now being able to go out and say to everybody, Hey guys, here are some really simple ways to add value to your customers like that, that they're going to be able to see and take advantage of immediately because they can, you know, they can really take advantage of the usability. If, if you were doing something where you're getting, you know, five, six conversation uh, messages in there a day, no problem. But if you're doing right. something where you're getting hundreds, it was a problem. And now it's, it's solved. So that's, a, huge know, that's, one. Yeah, that's a great example. I'm super grateful for that one. And then I got to say the templates to me, I think is, is an absolute game changer. I think that you are now putting into people's hands the ability to deliver what is some of the sexiest, most um, high impact value that you can show right away to a small business is they want to be able to see themselves looking better. I want to be able to see my business as this professional, you know, good looking business and all that type of stuff. And, and that is websites, landing pages, templates, all that type of stuff that that used to be, again, this expensive creative process that now anybody on this call can go in there, press a button and go look and and demonstrate that a value so immediately, so powerfully that all of a sudden you are being seen in a different light. Now all of a sudden yep. your customers are going, oh wow, look what you just did for me, right? And it's two ninety seven a month you're going to charge me, and I get access to that website plus these cool tools to help me actually make the website valuable. Like it's yep. it's a total game changer. So to me those those are those are two I, huge huge. Well, that's funny because I I would say I love the templates the most as well, and you know I I think we will drive harder in that vein of um, just trying to make it 
you know, give more easy buttons to the agencies and, mm -hmm. and, and in a minute. So today the templates are only visible to agency users. We will make it in a, in a minute so that you can actually flip the script on that and you can show it to their clients. Cause some, some people like it one way, some people like it the other. So we'll give them the options, but the idea there is to not stop there. So we'll continue on things like we'll, we'll move into other asset categories. So I, I can see Facebook ads in the off dang or, you know, TikTok stuff or whatever, like anything where there's content to be created, we will roll out um, a template section for that just because I know invariably, I, well, I, and you know, this is selfish to my, to me, right. Is um, at the end of the day, like if someone said to me, Hey, you need to make a website. I'd be like, you know, in the past, I would have been like, okay, I'll be going to theme forest here and pretending like I made this website, but I'm not creative. I can't make a website. I can't make anything. So I, I would go look for a template. And besides, I actually think you know, again, ROI positive is how I always think about it. It's not about the absolute best, most amazing custom thing that ever was, you know, it could be. That's not what people need. That's not even what people want. Um, I think that, you know, if you really think about it, you know, do you want to buy a car that you, you know that a, a thousand other people or a hundred thousand other people own and drive and have driven and, and works? Or would you like something someone made custom in their garage for you and they're the only people who know how it works and you know all all this i mean i just very quickly you'd be like well uh, but it's I got 1200 horsepower sean i'm telling you yeah, exactly yeah, yeah, yeah there you go right and you're like well i guess if it's like you know if i if i'm either super rich or it's free and i drive it on the weekends and even then maybe i'm not sure i want to take the risk that the thing won't fall apart you know it's like you don't really want it you just think you want it and that's not that's not how life really works so if you can create these roi positive moments for your clients it's going to crush it. And so I love the templates because I think they help you do that better. So we'll continue yeah. to invest more and more and more into things that are in that vein. So, and like you said, yeah. Mike, I love what you said is, is throw the template out there and then all of us can kind of rush in and do something, right? Like we could update the copy or we could tweak this or tweak that. Cool. We And, and that's what I think people want. In fact, somebody at the event gave me, I got to go look this up to see if it's real, but it makes sense to me. He gave me the example of Betty Crocker and he said, you know, do you know why they just sell the boxes and um, it's because people want to feel like they made the cake, mm. but you're not really mm -hmm. making a cake. You're just putting an egg and putting it in the mix and throwing it in the right, right. oven, right? And you can tell people you made the cake. And they said that, that Betty Crocker tried at one point to actually sell cakes and cupcakes and things. And it totally bombed because nobody wanted it, that people wanted Definitely. to say they made the cake, right? right? So, you know, that that I thought was really interesting. So anyways, we yeah. looked at a lot more stuff in that direction. Uh, that's awesome. I love it. Um, all right. So questions. Uh, yes. From folks who are coming here, we'll take a few of them. And guys, let's not get too crazy about like the super specific little, you know, bullet point features and things like that. But, uh, you know, some some bigger picture, some higher level, if you will, um, things. So uh, actually one. So that's interesting is just any plans for development around webinars and webinar, you know, management in the system. It's funny. Uh, yes, um, I'm, I was just looking at, at my at my my Google Notes roadmap. It's oh, by the way, if anyone wants to know where the master plan for high level is, it's sitting in Google Notes. Um, but uh, yeah, Q1 2023, so that's next quarter. Uh, item number five: webinar software. <laughs> wow, there you have it. So, uh, you heard it here first. Um, that's <laughs> awesome. Um, let's see here. Um, uh, snapshots related to social media and more templates related to social media. Oh yeah. That's so a, I, I, that's a no I gotta really get, I gotta, I gotta really punch through these, uh, release, release notes. Um, that's actually already done in live. So, uh, social media templates are in, uh, snapshots already today. I just haven't dropped a video on it. And if yeah. you haven't seen it also, the other big thing on social media is the CSV upload concept. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, and so you can actually upload a CSV and you can do something. I don't even know what, Mike, do you know why we have, <laughs> speaking of something you probably shouldn't, you, you, you might know about that I should probably know is why is there, what is the difference between social media uh, templates and snapshots and the CSV upload? What is the difference between them? Yeah, like why would, why would you use one in one case and the other in the other case? Um, so with the, with the, with the CSV, what I can do is I can create like a whole month's worth and, and but maybe you could do this, you could accomplish the same thing. <laughs> I was wondering. I yeah, yeah. It yet, we did both. Yeah. So anyways, I have yeah. no idea. Well, you, what, got, you got both. Is. You can do it either way. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> oh, I just figured somebody, somebody else would know. It show, you know, it's like the system is, it, well, and these are all these really 
man, this is what's so fun these days though, is like we have a product manager who is all about social media and she is lethal and she knows all things social media. And that's, that's how the world should be. That's why that product is so good. I have no clue why we did both of those, but I, I just, I haven't asked her yet, but I figured somebody else would know. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, let's see here. Uh, Tim says, are site maps and blog posts going to be dynamic at some point? Sure. Why not? Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is where we're, uh, we're probably mean, getting into I the mean, nitty gritty, right? Well, no, I mean, no, the reality, no, no. I mean, the reality is, is like, um, so two things. So the, the most important thing is we always have the ideas list. And so if you go to ideas.gohighlevel.com, we literally listen to what you say and we do what you ask us to do. Now, that aside, the product managers I was just talking to, they have, they own their products and they know way more about them than I do. So like, for example, what you just asked makes total sense to me. And, you know, some ideas you'll say to yourself, isn't that obvious or isn't that something that should be there or whatever? My bet is in that situation, the product manager already knows that. They already have it on the roadmap. And the problem is always me, right? So I tell them, listen, if it's a new feature, cut that thing down to the to the, the bare shreds. And I want out that feature now. I want it out yesterday. And I want it out in the most basic format possible. And as great product managers, they listen to me. And then they're like, okay, what's superfluous in any way? Like, what could we just even say is coming next? And they throw it out and they punch out that first version. So like on blogs, I, I mean, I guarantee you um, we'll have a big update on that. Actually, probably something this week. Um, I I will have actually, I have that call tomorrow, so I don't know, but I have my my upcoming release call tomorrow where I'll know more about specifics. But um, I do know that there's a big release for blogs in QA. I don't know what's in it, probably that. Um, I totally see why the sitemap should be dynamic. If it's not, all, all I would say is if you're on this call and you really care about something, make sure it's on the ideas list, make sure it's voted up. And I guarantee you, the product managers are watching. Yeah, I was going to say, you you are now at the point with the number of developers and product managers and features and all that stuff that all of these things will be moving forward at a pace that you can't even keep up with until... And lucky for us, by the way, Victoria um, gave us the answer. <laughs> See, I know. I saw that. Victoria, yeah, Victoria has, yeah, has, got Victoria. This, uh, has got this all figured out. So awesome. Thank you, Victoria. And then... We'll go right to her because she asked a question. Then any plan to help with onboarding automation, especially the ability to automatically populate custom values? Oh my gosh, Sean, tell me what is the plan yeah. to have somebody be able to fill out a form or a survey and then automatically populate the custom values? Yeah, so that is what we really need to do is make a create a new sub account be a workflow action because um, that's how that all would work, right? You would put a form in your in your main account. You would have a workflow fire off based on that form. And then the create sub account sort of workflow action would be there. Um, and, and I get, yeah, I'm trying to think about, or even if you did SAS, I'm trying to think about it. Even if you did SAS mode, you could then have them subsequently fill out an onboarding form and have that update, uh, update that. So let me ping that product manager. I mean, right this, is, this is, I mean, one for her specifically referring to onboarding, that's huge for, for me as well. I think just just the ability for me anytime, even with an existing account, to be able yeah. to send out a survey to a customer, and when they fill out that survey, it automatically populates the custom values that I want it to populate, is is huge because then it takes away a whole degree of manual effort from being able to like build a website, build a new landing page, any of that type of stuff, because it just automatically then populates back into those custom values. Like that's. That's so rad. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we have a lot of people <laughs> doing this now with the API and with Zapier. Um, so it just yeah, makes sense to out now. As, a, as a form. So anyways, I sent that to the product manager who handles work workflows and asked him to add that to the roadmap specifically. Yeah, awesome. Awesome, awesome. Um, let's see here. Uh, I saw one that I was going to ask about. Let's see, where did the... Oh, actually, I want to answer Dave's question. Dave, what are your thoughts oh, yeah, on yeah. offering a free website to clients if they sign up for a $97 a month for a minimum term like 12 months? Dave... This was my most successful foot in the door offer. And I didn't even require the minimum term like 12 months. So I just said, hey, we'll just build you a free website. And the hosting is $97 a month. And it's super duper business class hosting. And we keep your security upgraded and all that stuff. And now with high level in particular, what you want to do is in that $97 a month, incorporate some of the other features of the platform, like that conversations tab, right? So now 
you're getting them into the software, not just the website. They're, you're getting both. So now you now you are you know using that as a really nice foot in the door for the rest of the capabilities of high level. This is this is one of my favorite offers. So we signed up over 300 businesses in one month with that offer. And I'm not I'm not suggesting that you're going to do that. We had a big list of prospects that we had already been selling to, but the point is. We had a big list of prospects that had not yet converted to our services and we sent this out and it got a huge number of new businesses to convert because it's a very appealing offer. So, you know, absolutely. And then, you know, some, there was some other conversation in here earlier about how, yeah, sometimes people can believe it's too good to be true and you need to put some other features in there or raise that price a little bit or whatever so that people can kind of understand, hey, you're not just ripping them off. And, and that's true. We, well, I mean, one, we had a reputation in the industry already. But two, we did. We In our marketing, it says, we know this sounds too good to be true. Here's why it's not. Here's why it makes good business sense for us to do it. And we were just totally transparent. We said, hey, look, we know that you need a beautiful new website that's functional. That's what yep. we do for a living. We know that if we deliver you a really good one, you're going to be more likely to, to you know, want to use our services. So this is a great customer acquisition strategy for us. And it's a win-win. And that that was enough. People were like, OK, great. You know, it's it's you doing marketing to try and you know, get more customers. It, it was awesome. Um, so yeah. highly encourage you to uh, to look at that you know, strategy and, and test that strategy. Yeah. Um, and I, I like the fact that it's just predicated on something people can understand. So I think. The, the people that always win are selling something people that they're talking to already understand. Like a website is an understandable product, right? People know what that is, right? Or leads or customers or, you know, whatever, like finding something that they fundamentally already connect with that isn't a feature, you know, it doesn't sound like a feature because the word CRM is probably the last thing I would ever mention to anyone because most people don't even know what that really is. Ask, mm -hmm. a, ask at your next barbecue or, you know, a yeah. holiday party, hey, what's a CRM? And, you know, people might be able to like know what the acronym, but like, what does it do exactly? And how is it used? Like, no one has a clue what that means. So don't sell it. Yeah. And if you try to sell it, they're going to say, oh, I already have that because invariably they've signed up with someone else anyways, because they were told to at some point as those CRMs were sort of magically solve all their problems. Like stay away from things people don't understand and stick to things, stick to outcomes, right? Stick to things that, like people see as like a, a final event. And isn't that, isn't that amazing? It's amazing to me how, how true that is. I have a good friend here in San Diego that just raised a hundred million dollars for his uh, medical equipment business, hundred million dollars. And he is just now putting in his first CRM. I, and I asked him, I said, so what are you using as a CRM? Cause he was asking about high level, you know, what are you doing, Mike, all this yeah, stuff. Yeah. And I said, what are you doing for a CRM? And he goes, he goes, what is that? This is the CEO and founder just raised a hundred million dollars for his business. The business yep. has been around for like five years, six years, something like that. And he's, he's like, what is that? And I'm like, it's the software that you use to like have your salespeople manage their relationships, make sure they're following up with yeah. everybody, all that well, stuff. And he goes, what he he goes, no, we've never had anything. We just are implementing something for the first time. So were they using just email and stuff back before that? Yeah. They yeah. were just letting, he was just letting his salespeople just do their thing. That's amazing. You know, what, <laughs> what he just know that they're probably all using some CRM on the back end. Um, yeah, you know, yeah, right. They probably got their own but, CRM. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. But you know, that's the thing, right? I would say, and even now, I, I mean, his process that he's going to go through is going to be terrible. He'll probably end up with Salesforce, so, and then he'll find out he needs a consultant to get that implemented. And boom, yeah. you know, snap a finger, and two million bucks will fly out of his wallet before his CRM ever even works or goes live. Um, yeah. it, it's just such a it's such a tough thing, right? And and so I would say, and he doesn't want, and you know what's funny? He doesn't want any of that. And I love this, by the way, I hope I meet that guy just to tell him how amazing I think he is that he didn't buy into the Kool-Aid. He just went out and sold, you know, sold a bunch yeah. of medical devices before, you know, but it just shows yeah. that's the point. But the fact of the matter is, he, you know, it's selling those outcomes that matter, right? It's like, hey, can I forget CRMs, just sell outcomes. Who don't want CRMs? They want leads and customers and, you know, they want advancement in their, in their businesses, sell that stuff. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about, so one of the things I'm really excited about, Sean, is the moves you've made into one, affiliate marketing management. That's, that's you know how excited I am about I know, that. Man. Yeah. And then two, with the memberships and stuff like that, you're, you're opening up Ooh. the possibilities of high level to, a, oh, to all new industries OMG. and stuff like that. Um, 
one of the things I was thrilled with, actually, this is a feature that we haven't talked about yet that I was thrilled with, is your ability to track how much somebody's watched of a video and then trigger workflow events. Oh, yeah. That. We're not even really talking about features here, Mike. Um, but I know. You know. <laughs> that, that's, a, that's a dream. Is that oh going to be included in memberships soon, I would imagine? So if somebody is in one of my courses, oh, and I, watch I'm certain of it. I, I, in fact, um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, there's a. The, let me just ping my. So I, I was gonna say the the credit for memberships, which by the way, so it's 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 funny. I remember when we built memberships. That was my decision. I pulled my team off. It was right as COVID hit, and I said, "Listen, I don't know how we're gonna do this, but we're gonna build memberships as fast as humanly possible." No one on my team believed me that it was gonna be worth doing. We totally did it. We put it out and sure enough, no one used it and no <laughs> one did anything with it. And, and they all said, we told you so, you big dumb idiot. And I said, you're right, you got me. But what, uh, the product manager who took that product over, um, his name is Neil Ashish, huge props to him. He drove that ball. Memberships have been on a tear this year. We have yeah. insane utilization. And what he just came out with, I think no one even understands this. Like there are mobile PWA mobile apps that are at every location level that are customizable and brandable that people can actually put on the home screens of their iPhones and their Android phones and at like a little mobile app for all the memberships. And it's free, by the way, we give it out for nothing as part of all the existing plans. Like it's insane, right? And so memberships have gotten just this huge, huge uh, uptick in usage. Yeah, I, I, I actually, I am super, super, super bullish on the memberships. Memberships, affiliate software, again, what it's doing is it's just opening up all kinds of new opportunities um, for us to be able to do things in the marketplace and make money that we're not currently able to do. Um, so it's, it's going to be, the, those things are going to be massive, massive impact here over the next yeah. year or two in, in ways that I, I think a lot of people just don't even understand yet. Cause they're not, they're not thinking memberships, right. That's not been their model. Yeah. Typically. Yeah. And the word membership is kind of weird, right? It's kind of like affiliate. It's like, I've talked about how affiliates are really just referral. It's just a referral program. And it's refer referral software, but people haven't got onto it yet because they need to get taught. Like all local businesses, they live and die by referrals. In fact, I was in I was in San Diego um, going to traffic conversions, and the day before Digital Market had this event, and I went there, and this guy from Texas um, who, who's been in digital agency space for 20 years, he's a big agency in Dallas. Um, he said, you know, um, businesses really know a lot about what to do with a referral, but they don't know anything about what to do with a lead. And I was like, gosh, that's such a genius statement. He, you know, he's saying like, you see them, the business sees them both as the same thing, but they're fundamentally different things. A referral yeah. is like a pre-sold customer, whereas a lead is someone who's just like saying, well, I might be interested. I'd be interested, right? yeah. Totally different. And so affiliate management software is just referral software. So you can get a local business to utilize that as a referral platform by creating an incentive. Think about like creating a Groupon, but the business is doing it for themselves instead of paying Groupon, they're just paying themselves. The amount of amazing scale they could achieve very quickly by having customers refer customers, refer customers, refer customers. I mean, it, it's compounding is what it really is. It's yeah. insane what you can I, uh, this, this to me is certainly with, with the media business here in San Diego, I, it is one of my biggest untapped opportunities. And I am just now getting, I've had two events, two local events in the last month that have come to me and said, Mike, we have an affiliate program. Will you promote our event? And I'm like, ah, finally, finally, we're starting to get more small businesses that are aware of the possibilities of, Hey, wait a minute. I don't have to pay you for advertising. Because yep. you have this media site, you know how much it costs to get attention to something. Now you can just promote my event and make money on ticket sales and it's better for both of us. Yep. Absolutely. So that's, that is such a game changing opportunity in local. It's, it's this will be the way I, I truly believe this will be one of the biggest ways that, that advertising and marketing gets done in the future. Yep. Customer acquisition yep. on the local level, even on the national level will continue to move this way. I can't tell you how many people are content creators like you who are in our space, who we call up and say, have you, you know, have you ever heard of this? And they'll sort of say things like, well, I've heard about it, but I, you know, it's sort of like, it's almost like I get with Google AdWords. Like I tried it, but it didn't work. Like it's not a real thing. And so we, like, we actually have people who we've paid money to, to like get started. And then off the back of the getting started, we, we also make them use the affiliate link. And then the results they get are so overwhelming from the affiliate stuff that they're just off and running, but it's like, you have yeah. to pay them almost to like prove like, listen, no, this is too good to be true here. Here's some money, go try it. 
and then they're like, wow, that's incredible. So I think I mean, you, can, and you can do this for the average med spa. You don't have to just be like online to do this. There you go. Med spas, home services, renovations, kitchen remodels, uh, landscaping, real estate agents. Think about this. Oh, totally. I can, I can cut deals with, with their San Diego, with real estate agents, kitchen remodelers, all this type of stuff where I'm going to say, hey, look, I'm going to list your properties on our site. I'm going to put together a cool little article featuring the property. I'm going to use this link so it tracks back if that person ends up doing a trans, if somebody ends up doing a transaction with you, then I get a fee. Yeah. And in, in San Diego, right? The oh, average home yeah. value is a million bucks. Like, <laughs> Hey, I'll, I'll take a couple thousand, you know, yeah. whatever. Right. Totally. Like it's right. The, the upside and it's is a, crazy. It's, and it's a win-win for everybody. Right. Because the other thing is yeah. if you try to say, look, cut me a big check right now, they'll be like, I don't know. Yeah. Are you really, yeah. do you get yeah. traffic? Are you going to be able, you're really going in on the deal with them. And on yep. the other side, for you, you you know your own worth, you know what you're capable of, and you can actually ask for a lot more than they would ever yep. be willing to cut you as a check for the advertising. Absolutely, performance based is is killer. Man, we're we're going we're, we're going crazy now. We're going crazy. People are people are going, what the heck? What are you talking about? I just I just want the uh, I yeah, just well, want the, the button on to a, to a training video near you. Um, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Um, we've been here an hour, Sean. I know I, I want to be respectful of your time. You got stuff to go. You got an empire to build. We've all got empires to go build. Um, <laughs> any, any closing thoughts, uh, anything that you want to throw I out mean, there and share I mean, with the group? Just, again, I've been trying to be boring here. I, I, and, but, but I, you know, I think we have a lot more to go. And the good thing is, I think the biggest thing I would say is that this model is so in its infancy. I mean, I, as yeah. much as I, I love the success that we've had, and, and more importantly, quite frankly, the success that we've helped enable and been part of, the, none of those people that I've met, like the person I met who got the $10 million business, there are going to be so many of those people. It yeah. is insane. And so yep. if, if you haven't gotten to this model, don't be upset. Don't be afraid. There is so much more to go. There are very few people here that have done this. And there, it's such a massive market. Um, there's just a huge opportunity. You're, you, 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 as in high level, is just getting started. I absolutely know this based on experience. And you, the crowd of people who are listening to this, are just getting started. I know this from experience. And I'm telling you guys, I saw this play out in the IT services space with Everon and the platform there that became the platform that allowed us to start automating our services and, and charging the recurring revenue and all that good stuff. It was a platform called ConnectWise, which my friend Arnie Bellini built. Arnie Bellini was, was Sean from a high level. He ended up selling that business. He ended up selling that business for $5 billion because he built the platform that was the platform of the IT services industry, specifically for the small business community. So it was the exact same marketplace in that industry when I got started in it was a bunch of dudes driving around in beat up cars, pulling network cables and things out of their car, going yeah, to the office, charging yeah. 125 bucks an hour with a terrible business model. By the time I left that, it was managed services and it was charging all you can eat, remote fees, automating a bunch of the service delivery, all that type of stuff. And there's a whole bunch of consolidation in that industry now, a whole bunch of millionaires from that industry now. Whereas before, it was not like that. It was a bunch of dudes driving around in their trucks, oh, in their cars, totally. right? Totally. So yeah, yeah, yeah. This, is, this is just getting started <laughs> the next five years, man. I tell everybody, guys, like if you will just put your heads down and just go, 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 go like crazy, you will be astonished at one, what you can accomplish in a couple of years and two, how much their opportunity is going to be. It's, it's so stinking exciting. I, I'm, I'm thrilled. As Man, you can Arnie tell. <laughs> LinkedIn is hilarious. He, he, he lists that he graduated with an MBA in finance in 1981. And he lists yeah. a great point average, 3.5. <laughs> is that Arnie Bellini? Is that Arnie? Arnie, man, you would you would love Arnie, Sean, and he would be a great he would great be a great person for you to know. He oh, is, I can't wait to meet him. <laughs> he is a total character, but man, that dude could run a business. He he was a sharp cookie who just got stuff done. He was really impressive. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's he's a character. <laughs> 
Awesome. Uh, I think we got to wrap it up so we can get you get you back to your day. Everybody, yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Always. Yeah, thank you for your time and attention in your business. Everybody, thank you for being a part of the community. Sean, thank you so much for coming here and sharing uh, your experience and insights with our community. We love it. We love high level. We love what you're doing for us um, and can't wait to see what, what the next year and, and years uh, have uh, in store for us. I can't wait. Thanks, everybody. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Take care, everyone. We will talk to you soon, and we will see you in the community uh, here in the days ahead. Okay. If you guys have any questions from this call that did not get answered, that I can you know do my best to answer them, uh, make sure and post them in the groups. You can post them in the Facebook group, or you can post them in the circle group, um, and just let me know, and we will do our best to answer them. Um, as always, guys, there's some of the, you know, the technical details I can't answer for you. Um, and I want you to know that's an important lesson. Okay. One of the most important lessons I learned in the IT space is don't let all the technical details hold you up from selling and adding value. Okay. My greatest advantage in the IT space was that I didn't know how to fix a computer. I didn't know how to set up a network. I didn't know how to do any of that stuff. So all I could do was focus on selling. How do we sell? How do we add value? And then, you know, let, let the, the, the tech stuff get done by techs, by the IT, you know, the IT guys, and also by the software and the tools and stuff. But understanding that none of that had to be cutting edge. There's always some feature that somebody wishes they had. There's always something that, you know, somebody wishes you could integrate more and all that type of stuff. You got to get out there and just just sell, sell, sell and get it done and realize that most small businesses, even if they say they want that stuff, they're not willing to pay for that stuff when it comes down to, well, you know, here's how much it would cost to actually do that. It would have to be a custom integration, you know, all that type of stuff, you know, so go out there, focus on the value that you can add, focus on sales, focus on marketing, get your hooks in there to as many people and many businesses as you can stack up that recurring revenue. That's what it's all about. Um, and there's just going to be so many stinking cool opportunities coming your way. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great day. We'll talk to you here real soon. Bye-bye.